This tutorial will cover review of reflections, but then also take it to a new level. If we have f at x and we put a negative in front of the f at x, I want to see how that compares to if we put a negative inside the f at x. So here is our original equation, f at x. I've also written it right here. It's a linear equation. So what happens when I put a negative in front of that f at x? Well, here's f at x right here, and I've put a negative in front. We have to remember the brackets. Once I open up the brackets, that negative is going to distribute into the brackets, and I'm going to get negative x minus 2. What happens if I put a negative inside the function? That means that wherever you see an x in the original function, you're going to put a negative x instead. So we're going to see something like this, where we have negative x instead of x, plus 2, and then taking away the brackets, the 2 is not going to change. These are three different equations. So in order to really see what happened, let's kind of graph them. So I've created three table of values. Notice that in this one, all of the original y values now have negatives in front of them. That's what happens when you put a negative in front of f at x. Now for all these guys, you're going to have instead of all the original x values here, you're going to have negatives of those. And those are going to affect your numbers as well. So let's just graph them and see what happens. Here's the original graph, your black graph. And then if we graph negative f at x, this is what it looks like. So it kind of looks like the same thing, except it looks like it's reflected over this mirror line. This tip down here is now up there. And this tip over here is now down there. So I think we can conclude, and what we've known before, is that if we put a negative in front of your function, then you're going to have a reflection over the x-axis. By the way, something new, any point that doesn't move is the invariant point. So after the reflection, if you have the exact same point, in other words, any point that's on your mirror line doesn't move, and those are called invariant points. Here's a green line, by the way. So it looks like this tip has gone over here, and this tip has gone over here. So it looks like when we put a negative inside the function, it's a reflection over the y-axis. So that's something new. Okay, so a reflection over the y-axis, and we also have those invariant points as well. What if I gave you something completely different, a random f at x? So here's a random lightning bolt, I don't know, equation, and we're going to try to apply these reflections again. So remember, if I put a negative in front of the f at x, this guy is going to flip over the x-axis. And I kind of want to show you, here are the y values. And again, if we put a negative in front of the f at x, all the y values will change to negatives. Because we're now essentially saying negative f at negative 3, which is a negative 2. Okay, So this guy is now going to become a negative 2. All right, take a look at all the y values again, and all the y values down here. They're opposites of each other, and that's how you get your reflection over the x-axis. If I decide to put the negative inside the bracket, it's now going to change all these x values that you had originally input into your function. Now they're going to be the opposite numbers of the inputs, and you're going to get your outputs. Okay, so it's going to reflect everything over the y-axis. Number three, if we're talking about a root graph now. So this original root graph is going to be moved to the right one. okay? And if we put a negative in front of the f at x, it just goes in front of, almost imagine this as like brackets. okay? Now the negative can't go in because it's not exactly like a bracket. We're just going to leave it like that. Now this other one is if we have the negative x, in place of the x. So instead of this x, we're now going to put a negative x. And we can take those brackets off. So there we go. These are three different equations. Let's graph them. Okay, here's your original f at x. But remember, you've moved it to the right one, so that's why it's shifted over. 
then the orange one we would expect would flip downwards. And then the green one we would expect, since the negative was inside the f at x, would flip over the y-axis. So this point right here is now going to be over here. Okay, so that's pretty much reflections um, within and outside the f at x brackets.